Hi, I'm here today to introduce you to some bubble wrap sheep. They're going to help me explain some essentials of herding. And if you're new to herding, there is a lot to explore. But first, let me introduce you to my new series of videos called Handler's Academy. It's primarily for people new to herding. To help me, I'm going to use Chandler, my handler, dog, my dog, my flock, which are the sheep, and of course cat, which you can tell uh, cat is a little bit of a renegade and won't be around too often, but uh, will probably cause trouble when she is around. So now we're going to talk about basic herding. And in herding, the main overall idea is that the dog controls the stock and you control the dog. So basically, the dog has one ear on you and one ear on the stock, which when you think of it, it's really amazing that they can do this because their instinct tells them control stock, pay attention to stock, but yet your training has taught them they need to listen to you. So it's really an amazing balance where the dog at one moment will be totally working on instinct and the next they'll be listening to you and taking your cues. Now, the reason herding is so difficult is because it's like a three ring circus. You've got the handler, you've got the dog, and you've got the stock. And they're all moving, or at least it seems like they're all moving all the time. When do you cue? When do you not cue your dog? When do you let the dog work? When do you move? When do you stand still? I mean, there's so much to understand and to figure out, and it takes a lot of experience. But the nice thing is that you're basing this on stockmanship. Stockmanship is reading and controlling livestock or moving it gently. You want to respect the livestock. You want your dog to respect the livestock. The first thing you want to do in herding is be safe. You want your dog to be safe, you to be safe, and the stock to be safe. Everything needs to be safe. So that should be uppermost in your mind. And one of the best ways to accomplish this is through good stockmanship. And stockmanship is based on observation. So you want to watch the stock. They will follow their heads. If their heads turn, they will go that direction, most likely. See how the stock move. How do they move when you lift your hands up? How do they move when you stand still? If you just lean towards them, if you take a step sideways, all of that will tell you so much about your stock and will help you to position your dog correctly. Now. I talked about bubble wrap sheep, so let's get to that. They always talk about there's a bubble or a flight zone around the stock. So let's take one, one sheep here and we'll talk about the flight zone. The flight zone is thought of as a bubble and a lot of people think of it as kind of a round bubble. But people that know livestock realize it's not really totally round. Instead, it's more of an oval, and which means that it's bigger in the front and back and narrower in the sides. So that is basically what your flight zone looks like, which means when your dog enters that flight zone, the stock is gonna move. The other thing you want to realize is that it's not only a flight zone, it can be a fight zone. If this sheep happens to have a lamb at its side, We'll use cat as the lamb for right now. And dog comes in too close. And especially if there might be a fence back here, then this sheep may fight your dog because it feels it has no escape route. So the main thing you want to remember is the zone is a flight zone or a fight zone. And you want to be careful with your dog because your dog is a predator, the sheep is prey, and if the sheep or prey can't get away, they will fight. So now we're going to go look at the flight zone or bubble in the real world. Let's look at the flight zone in action. Sir goes around and you can look at the flock as having one flight zone almost as one animal, with the lead animal being probably the most dominant in determining the flight zone. But you have to remember that each animal has their own flight zone that will affect how they react to the dog and to you. For this purpose, we're going to just look at the flight zone of the flock. Both of us are on the perimeter and I've stepped forward to hold my side. Now Sir's walking in. He hasn't really gotten into the flight zone, but as he steps in, the sheep react. He pushes them to my side, so I step forward 
a little farther into the flight zone. Sheep are thinking about it, and I'm putting a little more pressure on them by moving my feet and tapping my crook. That is getting them thinking about moving into the pen or moving towards the pen. So they start to move in, and Sir stops, and then he flanks out to catch him, and the flight zone again has shifted. Now he'll walk in, and yes, he comes right in the flight zone because the sheep can't get away from him by the pen, and in order to pen him, the dog has to come right into the flight zone. Some dogs may not be as comfortable entering the flight zone and putting pressure on the stock as Sir is, and that can cause those dogs to be sticky when you're penning, shedding, or doing other close work where you really need the dog to come into the flight zone and put pressure on the stock. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to this channel, and there are links below for my blog and also for the first chapter of my book, Positive Herding 101. If you found this valuable, please tell your friends and spread the herd.